Okay, um, thanks very much, uh, Milorad, for the uh, introduction. So yeah, so uh, I'll be um, talking about some of the developing stories in uh, twisted bilayer graphene, which is mostly related to its um, uh, topological and to magnetic uh, uh, properties. And before I start, I uh, really just want to thank uh, the, the people involved in this work. So um, um, from my group, um, the work was prim primarily done by Shao um, Balu, Tsita Das, and Peter Stepanov. And we also are very grateful for um, uh, collaborations, uh, theory collaborations, in particular um, by Ellen McDonald and uh, Andre Bernovic. Uh, and really, um, um, to um, uh, to give you some uh, outline uh, of the talk. So really, I'm, I'm going to talk about the developing um, a picture of um, uh, the uh, ground states uh, of um, uh, twisted bilayer graphene and basically um, 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 what type of symmetry breaking can cause um, uh, um, um, uh, the ground state um, in, in the flat bands and twisted bilayer graphene. So in particular here, I will uh, show that uh, really uh, chart insulators play a really uh, dominant role, which we first uh, revealed um, 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 uh, in uh, high magnetic fields, but also recently we started seeing um, several of these states uh, at uh, even uh, zero magnetic fields. Um, and last but not least, I will also talk about some um, 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 Lando fan analysis, uh, which we have performed uh, in high order bands uh, of the system and really uh, where we can uh, show that um, we, we can basically show under level crossings and we can extract some tight binding parameters uh, from these. Uh, and really, uh, before I go into the detail, just really a very, very brief introduction um, um, of, um, of um, the twisted bilayer graphene. Uh, and really um, what um, uh, uh, basically one needs to know about the system is really that um, uh, the system consists of two sheets of graphene, which are basically stacked uh, one on top of another. Uh, and uh, just a simple uh, geometric interference between the uh, lattices of the top and bottom uh, graphene layers uh, can give you this uh, called uh, Moray super lattice. Um, and uh, this Moray super lattice for um, uh, the twist angles of interest, so usually these are very low twist angles around 1.1 degrees, which is the magic angle, um, they have uh, really long periodicity. So um, the uh, lattice constant of the Moray. Uh, lattice is really in the order of 14 nanometers. So this is really uh, almost two orders of magnitude bigger than a typical carbon uh, lattice uh, spacing. And, and uh, really the unit cells are extremely large. They're in the orders of 10,000 atoms. Um, and uh, really um, uh, uh, what uh, usually we, we do to, to analyze the system, we sort of define these AA uh, regions where the top and bottom layer are kind of seemingly uh, or, or directly on top of another. And we also define this AB uh, regions where the top and bottom lattice they're slightly shifted uh, towards one another. And really um, uh, this sort of uh, um, um, this sort of um, um, periodicity gives gives really strong renormalizations uh, to the band structure. And so typically um, when uh, when we sort of um, think about the system these days, we, we like to think of uh, AB bilayer graphene first where interlayer uh, hopping terms kind of um, uh, renormalize the band structure from uh, starting from single layer graphene. But really in a Moray system, uh, these uh, tunneling terms, they're now an oscillatory function uh, of, of the Moray potential. And really uh, these uh, changing in the, in the hopping terms between the lattice regions, uh, they can bring a uh, really strong uh, interaction. Uh, um, um, they can bring really strong uh, re reconstructions to the band structure. And uh, really just to, um, to highlight some of the characterizations um, people have done in the, in the past on, on this type of systems is really, uh, first of all, uh, STM. So STM was really one of the uh, most um, uh, insightful techniques uh, besides uh, transports and other scanning probe techniques. And really one can um, um, uh, study the, this uh, Moray super potential uh, and reveal it uh, really with STM. So, so this is a typical picture of a system, um, of a twisted bilayer graphene system. And as you can see, uh, we can resolve these AA lattice sites and uh, the Moray potential really well. So those are not single atoms, which we see here, but this is really um, uh, the Moray super potential. 
Uh, and as you can see, so it, it can be rather periodic. So even of over like almost micron length scales, we can get very um, uh, good periodicities here. Uh, and the other thing is, of course, um, the band structure renormalization. This can be, for example, revealed by uh, nano RFS experiments. And this is those are experiments here, which were uh, done in the group of Felix Baumberger. Uh, and really, um, a lot of those lattice reconstructions, which are expected for twisted bilayer so in particular these flat bands at zero energy and these energy gaps, which are created here. So all those reconstructions uh, come from uh, the Moray superpotential, and we can really um, resolve them uh, in nano arpas. Uh, and uh, and these flat bands is really what um, um, is sort of the a centerpiece um, of the physics which we um, which we study here. And really, uh, for 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 the ongoing talk is is really, we assume basically our system uh, to be a system uh, which uh, has these ultra flat bands around charge neutrality around um, uh, energy of of zero. These bands are around 10 MeV uh, in width. Uh, and then, of course, um, because um, of the uh, narrow bandwidth, the kinetic energy is extremely low, so the electrons almost stop moving in the system, and therefore. Uh, the dominant energy scale here uh, is the electron-electron interaction. And really, so um, so uh, starting from uh, this introduction, I just wanted to also uh, immediately jump into some of the, um, uh, the um, uh, experimental results which were obtained in the last uh, uh, you know, three years. And basically, uh, one of the most striking features was the observation of uh, correlated insulating uh, states. Uh, at uh, full fillings uh, of um, uh, the Moray unit cell. And so as you can see, so this is, those are typical um, measurements which we're taking. Those are basically resistance measurements as a function of carrier density. And the carrier density is, is basically proportional to the Fermi energy, which we can uh, electrostatically tune in the system. And as you can see, so um, um, basically the resistance changes here as a function of carrier density, uh, really many, many orders of magnitude. And uh, some of these um, resistance peaks here, which we observe at the bent edges, we understand them really well. So those are um, those are basically uh, the band gaps um, in the single particle uh, picture, which uh, which arise in the system. Uh, but uh, the other um, uh, sort of resistance peaks, which you see, see here, namely uh, they appear always at uh, one or two or three electrons per unit cell. Uh, and uh, the same for holes, so, or minus one, minus two, minus three electrons per unit cell. Uh, these features are, are interpreted as uh, correlated uh, insulators. And basically, uh, these are uh, mod like uh, states where uh, electrons like to localize uh, at the, the, the lattice sites. And hopping between lattice sites is kind of uh, forbidden because it costs additional interaction energy, it costs additional uh, cool up energy. And so really this, uh, this was uh, observed around two years ago that really each of the uh, integer filling factors here were giving us uh, 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 a, uh, um, uh, a correlated insulator state. But however, the exact nature uh, of the symmetry breaking and the exact nature of, the, um, of these uh, ground states was, was not exactly uh, clear at, at, at that point in time. And this is uh, really interesting because um, um, uh, graphene actually um, has a fourfold uh, degeneracy. So it has uh, electrons which are degenerate with respect to spins, but they're also degenerate with respect to valleys. So in principle, every time uh, we uh, sort of um, um, open up a gap here, uh, uh, we also polarize the bands with respect to, to some of those quantum numbers. And in principle, so early on, there were already discussions whether uh, these states um, can be uh, ferromagnetic. For example, um, uh, the odd integer filling factors could be, in principle, spin polarized states. There could be also valley polarized states. But, but of course, in a in this um, spin and valley uh, phase space, there are uh, many other uh, combinations um, uh, which are, which are which are possible. And so, basically, uh, I, uh, what uh, the, uh, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to also um, try to go along the line. What is our uh, running understanding? Uh, of these uh, ground states, which we observe um, in, in the system. Uh, and also in particular, I will also uh, bring it into the context um, of uh, uh, topology. And so topology uh, is another thing uh, which um, uh, started to be um, debated very early on in this uh, in the system. 
uh, is uh, by the realization that actually all these uh, flat bands, they also um, uh, should have uh, non-trivial topo topological properties. And this um, basically um, uh, assumption comes from the fact that uh, unlike in a, a normal uh, single layer graphene, where basically the overall winding numbers and the rare curvature and the helicity in the brilliant zone are canceling out and become uh, zero in, in the uh, brilliant zones, which are created by the Moray potential. Uh, those are those mini brilliant zones. Um, the helicity um, and the winding numbers in each of them is actually uh, not canceling each other out, but they're adding, adding uh, each other up. And then in one of the brilliant zones, we add up a felicity of plus two and then the other of minus two. And there were a number of groups which really um, did the uh, careful, more careful analysis. And they um, uh, resulted in the, in the assumption that really uh, no localized funnier functions uh, can, be, um, uh, can be created in, in, such a, in such a system and that really the bands um, are best described by churn bands, which have uh, topologically um, uh, uh, non-trivial uh, churn numbers. And uh, really, so the, the, the ongoing sort of um, ground state uh, from which people start building up the system uh, these days, there are really many groups, um, uh, Oscar Wafek, Andre Bernovic, Al McDonald, Ashwin Vishnava, there's really um, all these groups um, um, studying these properties. And really, um, basically, the way one can think about uh, the band structure here is that we have um, really um, eight uh, um, quantum numbers, um, which are given by spin, valley, and sublattice. And really, depending on which uh, orbital we choose um, from this combination, uh, we get uh, we can assign different churn numbers of either minus one or plus one uh, to the bands. So, for example, um, with a sublattice A and valley K prime and a spin up, we get a churn number of minus one. And um, for um, a sublattice A, K, and uh, plus um, you know, spin up, we get a churn number of one. So this is sort of the building block uh, of, the, of the bands here. Uh, uh, however, really in practice, uh, we uh, typically have a very hard time observing these uh, topological properties because these bands are all degenerate. So very, they rely very close in energy towards one another. And really if one sums up all the chart numbers here, one ends up at zero again, and then uh, the properties are topologically trivial. So in principle, uh, to, in order to observe these ground states, uh, one needs to sort of uh, perform some sort of symmetry breaking. Of course, uh, symmetry breaking uh, can be done directly by interactions itself. Uh, or, of course, symmetry breaking can be done by uh, breaking C2T symmetry. So either reversion, uh, um, inversion symmetry breaking by, for example, alignment of HBN or by time reversal symmetry breaking, which can be uh, done uh, in, in magnetic fields. And I think, so what happened really, um, now, now I really um, stop with the introduction and I go more into uh, the, the observables. So what happened uh, as of uh, summer of last year is that many groups, starting with uh, the group of Eva Andre, Ali Azdani, Andrea Young, uh, Match Berger, and uh, Pablo Ferro Carrero, and, uh, and also uh, us, started observing really a very strong um, uh, churn insulators uh, at uh, elevated magnetic field. Uh, and uh, the, the sort of um, features which we um, started revealing um, uh, are best explained in these two graphs here. So namely, um, we uh, started observing um, in the uh, RxX values uh, as a function of magnetic field and carrier density, we started observing these striking um, diagonal uh, features of um, RxX equal to zero. Uh, and uh, along um, uh, those, um, uh, those same phase space, we also, uh, we're observing quantized whole plateaus uh, of the same uh, of the same states here, uh, and these states really um, uh, seem to appear from uh, different filling factors. So they're linked to to the filling factor, and they have a very well defined correspondence between filling factor and Chern number. And again, Chern number we de we derive just from the slope of the strata formula here, which dictates um, the slope in the N B phase space. Uh, and also, of course, we de derive the churn number from the hole measurements, which give us um, a quantized hole conductance. And so, indeed, so what we see here is a really well-defined sequence between um, <clears throat> the uh, filling factor and churn number. So from filling factor zero, we always observe a churn number four, from filling one, uh, a churn number three, uh, and so on. 
Uh, and so the ongoing uh, sort of interpretation is that those are indeed um, uh, these, uh, uh, these symmetry uh, breaking induced uh, churn, um, uh, churn bands, um, uh, which, uh, which uh, are sort of um, uh, revealing itself in high magnetic field, uh, probably to, due to some symmetry breaking in um, uh, time reversal symmetry breaking in magnetic field and, and, and in particular also in, in symmetry breaking because of interactions. And um, uh, really, uh, so, um, so, um, so this sequence is very robust. So we observe it um, really for uh, many different devices. And we observe it also in devices which also have a very strong superconducting state uh, at zero magnetic field. So of course, um, one, one immediately starts thinking along the lines of uh, topological uh, superconductivity here. Okay, so, um, but um, uh, really uh, changing gears a little bit. So, um, uh, of course, the question now, uh, which uh, became apparent now that we observe uh, these, uh, these states is uh, what uh, give rise to them. Uh, and really, um, uh, we started uh, in the further analysis together with Andre Bernowick, uh, we started leaning uh, more towards a picture where really um, um, uh, interactions uh, drive the symmetry breaking in the system. Uh, and one of the sort of analysis uh, which we uh, performed um, uh, early on was really to look at, um, um, at the sort of theoretically predicted sequence of uh, churn insulators, which we would obtain from time reversal symmetry breaking uh, and contrast them, for example, by C2 symmetry breaking. And really the sequence which you observe is best fit by a time reversal symmetry broken scenario at zero field, where really um, the, the dominant features are the, uh, 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 churn number four insulator originating from um, uh, filling factor zero, uh, where really uh, this is best um, sort of um, explained by a very polarized state uh, where really um, uh, uh, the, the churn bands are occupied um, uh, equally uh, in the uh, K and K, K prime points. And so um, um, with this, I wanted to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to switch, um, um, to um, to some um, some other results uh, which we also obtained uh, recently is uh, actually uh, we we were of course uh, based on uh, these um, uh, these early findings we of course um, were immediately debating whether uh, um, time reversal symmetry breaking uh, can be broken at zero field uh, just by interactions and indeed uh, we uh, had an, uh, one device um, recently which really showed um, these. Um, uh, that really the symmetry breaking can happen uh, even at zero field. And really uh, here in this particular device, we, we also observe these uh, churn insulators at high field, but in particular, we also observe um, uh, anomalous Hall effect uh, really originating uh, from a filling factor uh, of uh, one at zero field. And uh, really if we zoom in uh, at the data here, uh, at the uh, filling factor one position, you can see that we can um, uh, obtain a really uh, strong hysteresis loop around zero field uh, in the RX uh, uh, Y um, uh, measurements. And the RX Y measurements actually um, are uh, very near, nearly quantized. So if one uh, would uh, sort of um, um, uh, uh, compare it to the um, uh, RX Y um, uh, um, uh, conductance for, um, Resistance, sorry, uh, for of um, of a chart number one. This is really very closely um, uh, reaching those values, um, uh, which which would uh, in, um, uh, which would uh, allow it to interpret the state as a chart number uh, not fully quantized chart number uh, one insulator. And uh, furthermore, we also checked uh, the magnetic uh, the the temperature dependence of these states, and really these states. Um, have a, a activation temperature uh, below um, uh, uh, of around five Kelvin. So, so really, this is also very well uh, comparable to previous results, which were obtained by um, uh, by HBN aligned devices by the Gold Harbor Gordon group and by um, the group of Andrea Young. So basically, uh, to uh, to sort of put put these results into context, of course, this is this is uh, still uh, a debate uh, in, in the community, and of course, uh, theorists are um, uh, calculating uh, uh, many different ground states, but in particular, um, what um, I think is uh, summarized by the work of Andre Bernovic in a, in a recent paper, uh, where they try to sort of um, uh, 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 
um, try to, to make sense of uh, these phase diagrams and all the possible ground states is really that uh, the running um, uh, sort of a phase diagram uh, could be um, explained in the following terms. So basically really at a churn number, uh, at a filling factor minus two, uh, plus two and zero. So at the even uh, filling factors, uh, we have uh, topologically trivial states with churn numbers of zero. However, um, all the other odd integer filling factors uh, are basically um, uh, topologically non-trivial states with churn number plus or minus one. Uh, and um, basically upon um, uh, applying a magnetic field, what happens is that all these states uh, turn from um, these, um, 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 uh, from uh, the original parent states that turn into very polarized states because magnetic field couples the strongest to uh, higher churn numbers. And really uh, at high field, we observe transitions to um, completely very polarized uh, states with the given churn numbers as observed also uh, in our measurements. So I think uh, while this is of course is still a big debate of the exact ground state, but uh, at least some of the uh, assumptions uh, which we um, uh, which we um, um, uh, observed in our experiments can already be made, and there's and 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 some of the observables are really that the odd integer filling factors can be um, can be uh, churn insulators at zero field, uh, and that uh, really at higher B field uh, these uh, uh, there are phase transitions which we observe which go from like lower churn numbers to higher churn numbers uh, at higher field. And with this, I, I realize my time is almost up, right? Um, so then I think I'll, I'll skip, uh, skip uh, some of the last parts and I'll, uh, I'll just maybe, um, um, maybe you, just uh, um, end the do, talk here, right? You do have a few minutes, so. I, I do have still a few minutes, okay. Um, okay. Um, okay, so, uh, Last thing I wanted to say maybe then um, if I have a couple of minutes is that uh, really uh, what we also uh, studied uh, in high magnetic fields are the Landau level spectrums uh, of the dispersive bands. And really um, these um, Landau level spectrums give really um, uh, interesting insights uh, into the um, band structure parameters of the Bistritzel McDonald uh, model. And really just to, to um, remind you, so the, the band structure, which we consider typically uh, looks the following way. So we have again, the flat bands, which are here at zero energy. And this is, um, these are the, of course, the bands of primary interest, which we, which I have uh, basically talked uh, the, the whole time before. But in principle also uh, of interest can be these higher, honor, higher energy dispersive bands in particular, uh, because um, uh, um, because these bands are uh, have higher mobilities, uh, they reveal much richer uh, and much better pronounced uh, Landau level spectra. Uh, and from these Landau level spectra, we can uh, really try to um, extract some uh, useful information about the uh, the band structure parameters, uh, which uh, flow into uh, into the calculations like that. And in particular, uh, here um, if we look at the band edges here. Uh, we can actually approximate the band, is, band edges by Rushba like bands. So those are not um, any spin orbit coupling Rushba bands, but those are really bands just which originate from the single particle picture um, um, from, from the uh, lattice symmetries. Uh, and, um, and basically what, uh, what the, the, the cool thing about these bands is that uh, actually the, each, each of those um, bands here produces uh, their own Landau levels. And um, what we have done uh, together again with uh, Andre Bernovic, uh, we have actually looked at uh, Landau level crossings uh, and the positions at which the Landau levels cross here. And as actually, as you can see here, really uh, there are very uh, rich features in the original data here uh, where uh, Landau levels crisscross um, uh, from one to another. And if we plot them on, on a one over B scale, we can really very clearly see uh, the crossings of the Landau levels. Uh, and the position here uh, which, uh, at which the Landau levels appear um, is very well um, uh, in agreement with tight binding calculations. And it be, really allows us to fix um, uh, these positions, um, 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 allow us to fix some of the Bistritz and McDonald tight binding parameters, in particular, the parameters W0 and W1. Uh, and from, from these uh, tight binding um, uh, comparisons, we, we really get, um, the first sort of bounds of these parameters. And this can be, again, uh, very useful uh, for future 
uh, modeling, um, uh, uh, theoretical modeling of the system. Uh, and with this, uh, really let me um, uh, wrap up. So basically, um, uh, in summary, uh, we really um, um, are, are now on the way to, to better understand uh, the nature of symmetry breaking uh, in the system and the nature of the ground states uh, uh, in the flat bands. And really, uh, we start realizing now that these uh, that topolo topology uh, is extremely important here, where we really observe um, a very robust sequence at uh, churn insulators at high field. Uh, in one device now, we also observe these features uh, down to zero field, which of course suggests uh, that um, uh, these um, um, symmetry breaking can come from interactions directly. Uh, and last but not least, we have um, um, observed Lando level um, crossings and higher, uh, higher fields, which allow us to fix the band structure parameters of the Bistritz and McDonald uh, model. And with this, uh, again, I want to thank um, um, my group and uh, our collaborators, uh, and I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dimitri, for a wonderful talk and also for, for staying within the time constraints. Uh, the talk is open for discussion. Uh, if you have a question, please indicate in the chat uh, with a simple Q or question mark, and I will give you the word. I don't see any questions at, at this moment. Uh, maybe I can start with a quick one. Uh, Dimitri, you showed that uh, we have superconducting state uh, mm -hmm. at low fields or zero field, and then these mm -hmm. non-trivial states at high fields. So what is the recipe to bring these two together to have topological superconductivity that you, that you mentioned? Right, so I mean, one way, so uh, in this particular device, a uh, superconductivity uh, really appears at zero field, as well as the um, churn insulator appears at zero field. So in this particular device, one, one could in, in envision to make junctions. So you could pre, in, in principle make local gates, which kind of make a junction between the superconducting and the and the churn insulator region. So this is something which we, we dream to do right now. It's just really, um, really hard to make those devices. Uh, and um, um, uh, the other question I think um, is of course, uh, you were probably rightfully asking, so why, why uh, not all devices show these churn insulators at zero field? And this is an ongoing uh, sort of um, ongoing, um, uh, um, Ongoing question. So actually, um, uh, I don't know if you are aware of, so basically there were uh, two previous works which observed churn insulators at zero field. This was by David Goldhaber Gordon and Andrea Young. Uh, they had uh, specifically aligned their devices with HBN. So they, they were saying that they break C2 symmetry on a single particle level. They, they somehow um, prepare the state that at zero field um, a C2 symmetry is broken. Uh, however, also in their devices, I just recently chatted with actually with both Andrea and David, uh, they also had so far just one device which showed the exact uh, quantization at zero field. Right. So um, so I think uh, somehow it's a very, very fine system. You know, I think, I think uh, it's a disordered system. So we need to sort of make sure that domain walls uh, are somehow large enough that we can probe them and transport. Uh, also, strain might play a role here. So, so it's really not clear. So, really, um, really, it's a very finicky, uh, finicky story. Of course, yeah. That's why we need skilled experimentalists. Yeah, we need we need more, more. Yeah. To some of them that are in the audience and ask want to ask yeah. a question, you all please please go ahead with with your question. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Hi, Dimitri. Great talk. I wanted to ask, what is the range in angle one sees a churn insulator in high magnetic field, let's say mm -hmm. compared to, you know, what people see superconductivity in zero magnetic field? Mm -hmm. So, so look, I mean, so basically uh, here, here we have, we had a number of devices plotted out here. So we saw these churn insulators, see it from 1.04, 1.03, 1.15. So, so basically we saw them in the, pretty much the same range where people see correlated insulators and superconductivity. So it's not that people saw churn insulator in high magnetic field at, at, at angles, you know, which you don't see superconductivity, which are, it, it's not a bigger range. That's uh, what I'm It's not a bigger range, yeah. I see. It's not. Um, but, okay. but uh, right, so, but, um, um, 
Right. No, so, I was but just in, uh, wondering. It. In principle, I wanted to say that in principle, of course, these whole topological assumptions here, they're holding for a much broader range of twist exactly. angles, right? Mm -hmm. So in principle, whatever, whatever we, the con conditions which we need for, uh, for superconductivity are much narrower than the conditions for the topological um, ground state here. So in principle, I would imagine that uh, this is the topological properties are here much robust, much more robust and should be observed at different twist angles. Yeah, thanks. We have just about time for one more quick question. Jenny? Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, Dima, great talk. Uh, so I maybe I missed it. So just, just to clarify, is this one with the one one that shows the turning of like one, the feeling factor one device? Is that aligned to boron nitride? No, well, Okay, you 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 know you know best that uh, we so this one right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we have limited tests of that, right? We can never be one hundred percent sure if something is aligned or not, right? So we can we what we did is we looked at the edges of the HPN and we looked at the edges of the graphene and they don't seem to be aligned. Uh, of course, this is never one hundred percent proof. I think my uh, personal um, uh, my personal uh, smoking gun uh, argument is that really, if you look at the phase diagram, so for example, this um, temperature dependent phase diagram, uh, it is really, it, to, it looks really almost like a non-aligned HPN device, mm -hmm. right? It shows the superconducting domes, it shows the churn insulators, which are very similar to a normal uh, non-aligned device. Whereas the devices by uh, Andrea Young and by David, they, they look completely different in the phase diagram already. So the, the HPN alignment really, um, um, really altered them a lot. Right. So, so I think this, this really looks like a device which is non-aligned, which then has uh, an additional state appearing at zero field at the filling factor one, rather than a completely different device, uh, which is HPN aligned. Um, but I have to also say that um, about HPN alignment, I have to also say, of course, it's never totally aligned or non-aligned. Maybe there is some, some angle which kind of doesn't distort the, the phase diagram too much yet, but it stabilizes somehow the C2 uh, symmetry breaking. So maybe it's a small twisting, a small aligned. Uh... Right, okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you. But yeah, we don't, we don't know really. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's an ongoing uh, mystery. Okay, thank you all very much. Uh, Dimitri, we should probably get going with the program. Thank you again on behalf of everyone for the one. Thank you.